everybody it's Monday and uh, I want to do my video for you I was going to play golf but it's way too um it's way too windy out there and a little bit cold and I guess we wouldn't have too much fun <laughs> playing golf right anyways over the weekend I decided I needed to make cards for my grandchildren for Easter and this is what I came up with. I, I scoured YouTube videos and um, I liked this one. So um, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And basically um, what, you, what you need is your custom cutting system. And if you have ABC letters or stamps or however you want to do that part. Mostly I'm going to teach you how to do this pop-up chick. And um, as far as paper... Um, for, for the clouds, I just, I picked out something, you know, that I thought would look like clouds. And on that card, I used this part, but I think this one, I'm going to use this part. I think I like it better for sky and clouds and stuff for grass on the first card I made, I used some, uh, solid green designer paper, but on the first card I made, I also, for the clouds up here, I used the top part of this. I don't have enough to make clouds, but I think I could get some good grass out of this since it is grass anyway. And that's what actually what I used on this card. And then you need, a, uh, you, you know, what I did, I'll, I'll just move my letters out of the way because we talked about that and that. I just pulled out my um package of yellow paper and i pulled out the golden rod to cut the chick out you can use any shade of yellow you can make pink chicks if you want all i know is i need to make eight in all so i'm two down and i i have six to go and then a, a small piece of orange for the beaks so we'll put that aside for the uh, clouds and the grass, I, I use my border maker system. And um, actually, I, I didn't use the whole system. I just used the punch pot, but I did punch the full 12 inches. I have a cloud and I have the grass cartridge. If you don't have that, you can cut it freehand or you can draw it or you can do whatever you want. You can leave it out if you wanted to. But, um, but I kind of like the way this came out. So anyhow, you'll need the custom cutting system. You'll need the two circles and what the small one and the medium one. And we're cutting inside. So we'll cut, we'll cut this first and you need six of these. And that's for the body of the pop-up chick. And you're using your red blade. So I'll tell you something, I um, already did this video once, but only half of it recorded, so I had to do it again. That's why I have two cards there. One card I made yesterday, the other card I just finished making in, in the other video. So now I'll get my third one made. So always look on the bright side, right? I hope this this records the whole video. And this is three. I had to uh, purchase from myself a new blade. I, I still had some of the older ones that were brand new and perfectly, perfectly good to use. And so I, I took this red one and it cuts so well. You don't know what you, you, that you need it until you need it, and until you try it, a new one. So... I figured after 15 years, it's time. <laughs> the other one, you know, I was wondering why it wasn't cutting all the way around and all that. And when it starts doing that, you need a new blade. One, two, three, four, five, and one more. Six. And then you need two, two of the smaller ones. And these smaller ones were cut from the inside of this. So 
So that's two of those and six of the, the larger ones for the body. Now for the card base, I like to use um, a blank card kit. I'm trying to find where I put it. Oh, here it is. I keep these on hand. And they're, they're a Creative Memories product. It's only $6. You get 12 card bases. So that's what I like to use. It's a, it's a good quality, good quality card stock. And um, I always have it on hand. They come with envelopes. So it works out well for me. So that's what I'm using today. So we'll put that aside. Okay, the next thing we're going to finish our cutting, actually. So here we go. I don't have I don't have the other part of the system handy, so what I'm going to do is cut it freehand. So to do that, I turn it upside down. Whoops, didn't click in. Okay, I'll tuck it in and turn it upside down. And what I'm looking at inside here is just the edge of the cut, and I'll start cutting the edge of where it cuts, and then drop that out and go on. And I'm just putting it at the edge of the cut and cut again. So this can be done freehand. It's, it's I have to say, it's not pleasant to do it this way unless you just need a couple of cuts but going right across it's getting stuck and it doesn't do that when it's in the tool so with the right tools you can do anything easily that's what I always say and if you come up to my workshop when I start doing workshops in person up here you can use any of my tools it's always been that way it'll always be that way I have tools there and one more cut right there now these are nice I mean I could actually I think these are real cute actually I could probably do that but I'm not going to I already drew the chick on but this is what I'm interested in right here, that 12-inch one. We'll take that out. So I'll get my 12-inch trimmer. I think it's become one of my favorite tools, this 12-inch trimmer. It's well-designed. And I'm going about quarter to an eighth of an inch. About an eighth of an inch away from the, the first cut. So I got the grass cut. I'll put that aside right here. Now I'll put the clouds in. We'll cut the clouds. And I'm cutting the clouds the same way. Turn it upside down so I can see. And like I said, I'm putting the edge right at the edge of the cutter. At least I thought it was. <laughs> if it's not, you could just trim off the extra pieces. It doesn't really matter. Love these clouds. I mean, people, you can see other designs when you look at a lot of these border maker cartridges that are specific. People have used that these for bubble bath pictures and different things like this even though it says that they're clouds it can be anything your imagination tells it to be really so i'm just pulling out these little pieces that don't belong put the card aside and again i'm cutting about an eighth of an inch away And there's my clouds, and I'm going to put that aside with my 
grass stuck in here there and put that paper aside move the scraps over now our cutting is done all the cutting is done the rest is assemble so the first step is to make that big chick that goes inside the card we're going to fold these in half all six of them so you need six of these and you're going to fold them all in half each one So National Scrapbook Day, we still have room. We have room for six, six more people at each weekend. So it's April 23rd, 24th, 25th, or April 30th, May 1st, May 2nd. And the first Saturday of the month is actually officially National Scrapbook Day. And, you know, a little bit of history years ago. I guess it must have been maybe 1995 or around there. It was Creative Memories that declared that the first Saturday in May is National Scrapbook Day. And then, of course, the industry picked up on it and everybody, everybody uh, celebrates that day. So even if you're just at home scrapbooking. So now we're going to attach three okay and then three so I'm using I don't want I want regular tape runner because I want a good solid connection there okay so the way I want to make sure now you want to line them up just like that and then smush. And then one more. If you have precision point adhesive, that might work here too. I just really love the tape runner though. Let's do that again. And so I'm going to line them up. And there I go moving it, right? Human error. Always human error. So so now we got those together. Now we'll do these. Line them up. One. And I hope it's recording. The other one bounced off for some reason, and I don't. I can't explain. If not, I'll do another one. I have eight of these to make, so I may as well be talking to somebody while I'm making them. So now we have this and this one. Take that's double. That's, I think that's a single one. Yeah. We're going to connect these two. So, and that makes the body of the chick.
Oh, did I put it on the wrong one? I did. I put it on the wrong one. Well, that's okay. I think I put it on the wrong one. I I do that. I, I do, you know, to me, I make mistakes, but it all works out in the end. So you want to really look for the sing the one that's single, I guess. So now we're going to put this in. It's going to be like a, a lopsided chick. We're going to we're going to put this in our um on in our card. So to put it in the card, you don't want it up too high because the chick doesn't have long legs so we're gonna put it right here right about here so I'm gonna put tape runner and make sure nothing's showing and line it up Right in the center, right on that line. So whichever one is in the center, in the middle, which is probably that one, because as you know, I I did it wrong. We'll do this, this one. You're gonna take your black pen and you're gonna draw some eyes. is one on one side and one on the other. So I talk about the quality of uh, Creative Memories products. This is an old pen. This is from the old CM and it still works like a charm. So now you're gonna get your orange and you're gonna cut a beak. Very easy. And put some tape run around the end. And tuck it in. If you can get it apart. Come on, I know I can do it. Yeah. Just pull it apart a little bit and tuck that beak in. Look at that, how cute that is. So next I'm gonna get the grass and I'm gonna cut it down a size. And I just, just need my little precision point scissors. And then I'm gonna take the repositionable tape runner because this is delicate. And precision point adhesive would work on this as well, but I'm using my, I like, I like to work with tape runners. See how that comes right off there? I don't like to do it on my mat, but if I do, I clean, I clean it off right away so that I don't come back and something sticks. Okay. Yeah, I usually use a scrap piece of paper or, um, you know, they say parchment paper is good too. You can make like a parchment paper backing and then, whoops. Yeah, so the grass is down. And now I can uh, cut his feet. And now the feet. You want them to be the same, so you're going to cut freehand, cut some hearts, or some kind of, something that looks like a heart, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. And the feet go here.
And each one is unique. You know, I may have drawn them a little different than the others. And then you give you give that chickie some some legs here. And that one's done. Now we'll put the clouds in the sky. And I'll cut that down a size. Right about here. And again, I'm going to use my repositionable. Because it's a small area and I don't want to get regular tape runner all over the place because that that's really permanent and okay clean this off and I'll place this down for the sky clouds in the sky but not rain clouds next we'll put the sun up right there so the inside is done except I'll write a little message and sign our names and then there's the front now for the front you take the other small circle Cut another little beak, a little smaller than the one on the other guy, or maybe it's near the same size. It doesn't doesn't really matter. You know what they say: handmade is better. There's the beak for this guy. Now this guy needs an eye. He needs his feather and he needs his feet. You know what I didn't do here? I didn't do his wings. And the wings, I cut them the same too. And I just go around and then a little one in the center and another one over there. I mean, if you don't, did I make the wings? Uh, I made the wing. Actually, you want a scrap of yellow for the wings. Yeah. Not orange, but yellow. <laughs> Just kind of three little circles. Well, this yellow is, yeah, it's the same. So you put a little tape runner on the wings and tuck them under either side. I think that adds a lot to it. Looks like he's flying away. But he's not really. See, I made that mistake on the thing, but it still works fine. Just keep going. When you make a mistake, you just keep going. Right? So there you go. Now, like I said before, you can use letters like I did to put Happy Easter on the front. Or you can use a stamp. If you have stamps, I don't. Um, or, or leave it blank like that. I think it's kind of cute blank so that's the video for today i hope you enjoyed it if you do a card like this you can email me a copy at laura cm 126 at gmail.com and um or you can post it post a photo of it in the in the uh comments and you i'll enter your name in a drawing for a um, self-healing 
not self-healing, a cent uh, zero centering ruler. And that's what I'm uh, sending out to the winner this month. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next.